welcome guys back again to another video here we are going to talk about the transitions in photochemistry basically this is our third video in our photochemistry video series if you have not watched our previous videos which we have talked about like the basic concept and Jabuski diagrams uh, such interesting topics I highly recommend you to go and go, go back and see what we have talked about there and here in this video we are going to talk about the possible transitions for a given mo organic molecules right so we are going to focus on study for our organic molecules okay so when it comes to organic molecules most of the organic molecules are in the singular ground state okay singular ground state singular ground state singular ground state so from this singular ground state they will go into the high excitation state Let's move on to a example and then explain how this process can happen and how to interpret interpret these guys. Okay, uh, let's say let's start from the simplest one, methane, CH4. Now, to understand the transitions, let's go for the molecular orbital diagram. So you know there are four molecular orbitals, which are carbon, hydrogen, sigma bonds, sigma orbitals. So here we have electrons like this so these are the sigma bonding orbitals there are there are no pi bonds there are no non bonding orbitals and also there are four anti bonding orbitals these are sigma star anti bonding orbitals so the problem is now what are the possible transitions so you can Clearly, see there is only one possible transition, which is sigma to sigma star transitions. Okay, this is the only possible transition from methane to methane methane to undergo. Okay, now if you remember in your organic basic organic chemistry reactions, okay, uh, reactions when excitation happen, right? When excitation happens, uh, particularly a bond will be broken. A bond will be broken. So now, uh, why is that happening? Let's try to uh, see a condition. Right? Let's try to see a clear concept. Why this happens, right? So when excitation happens, you will see some electrons will go from bonding orbitals to anti-bonding orbitals. So anti-bonding means it it try to get away from a bonding orbitals. So if you remember your bond order and stuff, so. Uh, when you have occupied, when you have populated the antibonding orbitals, your bond order will be decreased. Your bond order will be decreased, which means your bonding, your sigma bonds are getting weaker. So more popu you more you populate the antibonding orbitals, more your bond tend to breaks. So that's what happens in your photochemistry, right? You know, when it comes to the photochemical reactions, you need to break a bond. So by excitation, you will decrease the bond order, right? You will decrease the bond order. So your bond will be much easier to break. So that's the basic concept. So let's move on to another example. Now let's take uh, alkene. This guy. Okay. What about this? Uh, let's take hydrogen, 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 and hydrogen. Okay. Now let's draw the molecular orbital diagram. You can see there are carbon carbon sigma bond, carbon hydrogen sigma bond, and there are carbon carbon pi bond. Okay. Now, when I draw the structures, let's draw like this is the carbon carbon pi bond, and then here carbon carbon sigma bond. We have four carbon hydrogen sigma bonds. Okay. Now, here we have the carbon carbon pi star carbon carbon sigma star carbon hydrogen sigma star okay now if i ask you the question what are the possible transitions now so <coughs> electrons are occupied in these orbitals the bonding orbit these are bonding orbitals these are bonding these are anti-bonding okay now what are the possible transitions there can be transition between pi to pi star sigma to sigma star right and there are there's a possibility from sigma to sigma star from this place right there are a lot of possibilities right but 
but when it comes to the photochemistry the higher the energy gap more uh, it's not it's not that much feasible to get that okay the higher the energy gap it it will be more unlikely to undergo that possible transition so the lowest possible transition in this case is the carbon carbon pi bond to carbon carbon pi star transition this transition so in this particular molecule in this particular molecule there's higher probability there are there's a higher feasibility for the excitation to undergo from pi to pi star transition so in this case pi to pi to pi to pi star transition is much more likely to be happen that's why when you see a photochemical reaction between an alkene you will see that when the reaction happens okay this pi bond will be broken into two radicals like this because when the excitation happens look at this when the excitation happens so we are talking about this excitation because that's the most probable transition in the system these are these are having very higher energy gaps between the transition so they are very much unlikely to be happen this is very likely to be happen so when the transition happen from this pi state to pi star state right this anti bonding orbital of the carbon carbon pi system will be populated so anti bonding orbital anti bonding orbital when the anti bonding orbital get populated you will decrease the bond order of the pi bond and weaken this particular pi bond so it's easy to break up for this uh, sorry so it will make this bond easier to break up to uh, give these radicals i hope you get the idea about it right so this is the uh, transition in this particular case okay so now i will introduce you to a term called chromophore okay chromophore chromophore is the place in a system okay chromophore is a place is a place in a system which is more likely to go the excitation okay that's the place where your uh, how how sorry uh, that's the place where your energy is being absorbed right mostly when it comes to photochemistry we are talking about the uv light or the visible light right so this uv and visible light uh, the place where this light is being absorbed that's called the chromophore so in this case this is the chromophore because that's the place where the excitation happens that's the place where this energy or this light is needed to be absorbed right i hope you get the idea right so that's called the chromophore now let's talk let's get into another example let's take acetone here we have the acetone okay now let's draw the molecular orbital diagram so i will not draw each and every individual molecular orbitals let's highlight them like this so here we have the sigma bonds pi bonds and don't forget there is two lone pairs so there are non bonding orbitals too okay and here we have the pi star and we have the sigma star so this is not there okay. now what are the possible transitions so there is this n to pi star transition pi to pi star transition sigma to sigma likewise there are transitions now what is the most probable transitions you can see the lowest energy difference between these orbitals are the n to pi star n to pi star okay. this is the most probable transition occur in a, this particular acetone molecule so now if i ask you what's the chromophore what's the chromophore the chromophore is this particular oxygen this oxygen atoms okay. so uh, this whole system this lone pairs and this pi bond okay. this is the chromophore this is the chromophore of this particular system okay now okay i hope you get the idea about it right now uh, let's just uh, add a few things for this acetone right let's say you have at a conjugated system like this okay. now now look at this uh, you have this conjugation right you have this conjugation when the conjugation is there right when the conjugation is there this pi system is getting stabilized right this pi system is getting stabilized more conjugate the molecule is more favor the pi to pi star transition so you will see the 
when it comes to higher aromatic molecules like this molecule these are very uh, conjugated system right these are very conjugated system so in these molecules the most probable transition would be pi to pi star not n to pi star but when it comes to these guys this guy with one phenyl group with these guys yes this pi to pi star transition is favored but still the n to pi star is the dominant one so in these cases this the small conjugated system these guys having n to pi star as the major transition it's the most probable transition but when the conjugation is increased 2 to 3 to like higher phenyl groups higher benzene rings higher conjugation order is coming into the place more and more this pi to pi star will be strengthened so rather than the n to pi star in these cases pi to pi star would be the most probable transition i hope you it's okay right it's because of the stability so this is the basic concepts in the transitions that's how you find a transition what's the transition it could be okay so uh, i hope you get the idea if you have any problems feel free to ask in the comment below i will try my best to answer those questions